Hello and welcome to another episode from Talks to Couch to Calculator. I am Francesca, your accountant, and Jordan is your therapist. And we are bringing in some really good conversations. If you have any questions along the way, please fire them over and we'll be happy to answer them. Sit back, relax and enjoy and laugh along with us. Hello. Hello. Another Can't believe week. another week. I Got know. our coffees in. Yeah. Loving the coffee. I know. Jordan treated me this morning. Yeah, for a change. <laughs> and for a change, how's your week been? Right, so my week. So what I've been doing, and I share this on LinkedIn, is my gratitude yeah. journal. Yeah. And we've done a couple of... So we, last week, this is actually a good question, mm. because last week you we spoke about... Oh, my God, I'm just looking at a spider. Don't. It's all right. It's in the. It's on the wall. That's at the bottom. not that big. It's not that bad, it's is fine. it? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we've talked about vo- uh, voice notes, didn't we? And you yeah. said you and um, Roxanne was doing voice notes, and we yeah. did a couple. I mean, we can't do it every single day. You can. We can. <laughs> but I think about it and go, oh, yeah. I don't want... To. It's really difficult. If anyone listened to the last week's episode, it's really difficult. So I have been doing a bit of that. I sent one to Claudia as well, my sister, Did to you? try it out. Yeah. To show her. So I want her to do it. Yeah. And she says, I'm not ready yet. It's interesting, oh, which is fine yeah. because it is hard to do. Yeah, it's hard to like get clarity over what you want from your day as well, which again, so hard. Is something that's so important. Like it yeah. can be. Well, it's like it's important if you want to go in. <laughs> get in there, Jordan. <laughs> if you want to like go into your week with clarity. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or your day with like intention and clarity, and you want to get certain things from it because it's just so easy to like sail through. Yeah. Each day and each week and think oh, today is this, right, just get through today. And then again, like not living for the weekend, but like, I'll oh, relax at the weekend. I can breathe at the weekend. That's so it's interesting. Lot, isn't it? Yeah, I try not to live like that because, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So my week has been great because I'm in a better place. So mm-hmm. I've had some stresses with the business and we've obviously spoke a lot about that in the past and I update you. Yeah. When you've got personal stuff going Let's say wrong, because we see it as wrong, don't we? Oh, that's gone wrong. In business, that's yeah. gone wrong. Yeah. It, I've allowed myself to f- keep thinking, and I do keep reassuring myself, better days will come. 100%. And they are now. I'm not as foggy. I spoke to June, who works with us, and she was like, oh, I can see you're back to yourself, because I'm talking business. I'm really doing, like, mapping out stuff and really yeah. taking control back. So it is a better week. Anyone that runs a business... We'll have highs and lows. 100%. And I do live, breathe and think about my business a lot. And yeah. like I said to you earlier, God, I'm carrying two mobile phones now. I'm yeah. having, I'm allowing myself a personal number. Yeah. When you messaged me, I was like, oh, it's about time. Did you? Yeah. Well, I thought. Never thought I'd do that. I wasn't 100% sure if you use the same phone for work and like personal, but I kind of assumed you would. And then when you sent that through, I was like, well, great. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. I am. I'm doing a lot of things. It's not reliant on me being so contactable. Yeah, because social don't media, be I'm there available all the time. And also, like that, genuinely isn't what people expect no. of you. Not reasonable people, anyway. We said before, didn't we? Like, you know, if I'm contacting, I don't know any service. You know that we use, like, if you need to ring the bank or like book your hair in. Yeah. You don't expect, you might like message at like 10 yeah. o'clock at night, but you don't expect a response then. See, interestingly, I like a quick response though. I don't sit there expect, well, God. But I also think, I know that's my sense of urgency though. Yeah. Because everything's so accessible. Yeah. People are expecting better, quicker, faster responses. And that's why I've built the business the way I have as well. Yeah, absolutely. With that in mind. But yeah, but it doesn't need to be immediate. And no. also like not at the cost of like, you know, having personal time and a personal life. Because you've got to be present in your personal life as well. Like, you've got to nurture your personal relationships. You know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, George would be like, you're talking about me again. Um, <laughs> but he's been on his phone a lot recently because obviously he's launching his business and yep. stuff. Yeah. And sometimes I start to just get fed up of it. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're going to have different... Go I know. On. But yeah. It's when we're sat with the baby, with Hallie... Like, he'll have her on his lap and then he'll have his phone there sometimes. And don't get me wrong, like, that's not a criticism of him as a dad. Like, he's an amazing dad. Um, And I've done it as well. But then sometimes I get sick of it and I think, no, like, come on. Like, be present with what you're doing. If you're going to focus in on work, like, 
have a half an hour on your phone, blast yep. that, and then, do yep. you know, and it is really hard to operate like that. And how do you tackle it with him? So if you see him, do you do it in the moment or do you think, right, well, I'm not going to say anything now? It's a mix. So you've sometimes got to be so I, careful. Sometimes I get irritated and I'm like, just leave it. And like yesterday, I went, because I can tell. So I was like in the kitchen doing something. <laughs> I love this conversation. And I knew that <laughs> and Ali was sat on his lap on the sofa. And I asked him a question and there was a slight delay in his response. And I thought, you're on your phone. Yeah. So I, as I was moving to look, I went, are you on your phone? And he went, yeah. And I went, get off. <laughs> and he just went, yeah. <laughs> oh, never. Yeah, but like, it was because it wasn't, it wasn't me like being like, right, stop that. Like, it was just like, right, get off, come on. Because yeah. it's something that we do speak yeah. about. Like, yeah. we need to be more mindful around our phone use, like, especially around Hallie, because it's not like, oh, I don't want her to see screens. It's not that. It's about just not wanting her to feel like she's competing with devices yeah. for our attention. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I do. It's, it's that, that side of things. So just like trying to have more time screen free where we put our phones down and we yeah. are just engaged as like a family unit. Oh, it's um, so I, I... But it is a real challenge. It's a challenge. Because then you go, oh, just... Yeah, and then you fall out. Or you have a conversation and you're like, yeah, what date was that thing? And then you go, hang on, just check my phone. It's just there all the time, isn't it? So I, I remember meeting Steve. So we've been together over five years. And he'd come around. So I'd have my phone always with me. Mm. And when we'd meet up, his phone would be out of the way. And I used to like laugh to myself because I was like chained to my phone. Yeah. And he's never, ever, ever said, and, it, and the amount of times I've been on my phone, mm. Can you get, you know, get off now? And the more, and I'm, I'm just, and I bet George is listening, but the more you do that, yeah. and if he did do that to me, yeah. I would hate it. Yeah. Because yeah. I need to, so I think, and if we do, and I catch him, do, he's on his phone a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because he's making money from doing it. Yeah, And the same with George and the same with what you'll be doing. Yeah. So I get it, but we didn't have little babies, I guess. Yeah. And I, and so I'm finding that hard to be relatable too, because I yeah, think, yeah. oh no, we'll just let him. But I get yeah. from your perspective yeah. and others listening in that will be feeling like you, yeah. for and sure. It, it's not like me imposing certain like rules on him. Or no, anything. no, no. It is something we've both discussed and we've both said like, yeah, we need to make sure that we, you know, have some time like on an evening where we put our phones down. And then we've been like, but on an evening is usually the only time yeah. that we have to sit down. Yeah. And I mean, last night was not the case. Like she just barely slept really? yesterday and then didn't go down until like late last night. Oh. Um, so that's hard as yeah. well. Like, yeah. Your turn. <laughs> it's not even Are you that. not been getting there yet? Kind of you get up. We have like an unspoken... Understanding, like, of, understanding yeah. of who gets up when, like, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, right? So, so going back to how good our weeks can be, mm. I've learned to think about what's the the outcome I want without being stubborn, yeah. So, I've, I've realized as well to make a relationship work, you have to look what's the outcome I want and, and not think, oh, well, I ain't talking to him, they ain't talking to me. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because it just upsets you. You're only upsetting yourself by playing a game. Yeah, and also like the other person can be completely unaware. They are. That, and I didn't that they've that. entered into this. Like, like, can't you feel this vibe going on? No. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, I'm so anxious around you right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not feeling this, and I know Steve's looking at me as if to say, "Oh, what's going what? on now? <laughs> what now? Do you this again?" You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I really sit there and I think, I feel like I'm going to fall out of you today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like anyone else do that I feel like yeah I can't believe you did that the other day even though it wasn't even anything bad yeah. I can feel yeah. that tension building yeah like it's something's brewing not an argument because oh, we, we don't actually argue yeah but that like annoyance like yeah absolutely sometimes like your tolerance is low isn't it and like they can't do right for doing wrong. Like, it doesn't matter what they do today. Mm. It's going to piss you off. Like, yeah. you can have the best intentions. You're going to annoy me. And, yeah. like, it's, yeah, it's so funny. It's just so funny how, like, different brains operate. And, like, the ability to, like, diffuse the situation. Yeah. Like, for example, yesterday, I will get... Is this juicy? We need it's juicy not, relationship it's not gossip. Really juicy, but, like, it's just... <laughs> funny like interaction that's very typical of our relationship I would say yeah I ironically as a therapist can be very like highly strung I guess in mm -hmm. a way like quite like like we mentioned before 
needing to like get things done, be in control in a sense. That's normal. Uh, yeah, and I have in my head like I want to do these things or stripping off. I want to do it in this way. Yeah, etc. Yeah. So yesterday George was like, "Your way's the best way." Yeah. <laughs> what's the plan tomorrow? George what is like, "What do that. you want to do?" Yeah, that's what he said yesterday, as we often do. Was this for a Friday then? Is this your Friday family day? What's that? Having when he? Oh no, this was the other day. This was yesterday. Right for. Today, Today. Okay. yeah. So he's like, "What have you got on tomorrow?" And I was talking about how, like, yeah, no, that was it. Get there eventually. He was like, "Have you seen the post I put on today?" And I immediately was like, "No, I haven't. I just don't get time to check." Like, oh, sure, dude. Yeah, I was like, um, because Wednesday is a day where I travel an hour to get Hallie to um, my auntie for yeah. like childcare. Then I work from my granddad's house, 10 minutes from there. And then I go pick Hallie up, have dinner with my granddad, and then come back with her for like bath and bed, mm. which didn't work out well yesterday. Mm. So I just, I don't really get much of a gap when I've got the clients and then picking Hallie what back What could up. you have said? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, this In is how moment. I led. This is how I led yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, um, I haven't seen it. I haven't had a chance to even like look at social media. I'm just not getting chance at the minute. And he was like, I'm not saying that. I'm just asking if you've seen it. I was like, I know you are, but I want to be able to share things that you put on. I want to be able to do my stuff because I haven't done it in a week now. And I just haven't had the time. And he was, yeah, and he was like, all right. And then, George, I hear you. I know, I know. <laughs> this has got to be real. Yeah. And then he went, he went, well, what about tomorrow? What have you got on? I said, obviously got podcasts and we've got baby group. I was like, but then... And then I said, but then you want to do the garage art? And he went, no. I went, yeah, you want to do that? He went, no, don't make me your excuse. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, but, and he went, well, I'll drop Pally off at my mum's for a couple of hours. And I was like, but she's in the office tomorrow. Right, well, I'll just do the garage in the evening then. There's a light in there. Yeah. I said, yeah, well, that would work. He was like, sorted. And there you go then. And I was like. Well, I wonder why you felt you had to go out of time and it, like he was going on at you. I don't know. I feel like it was like, it was probably like a, just an automatic subconscious way of being, instead of saying like, no, I haven't seen it. I don't, actually, I really want to make some time. Yeah, or to, I'll go, oh, I'll look at that because Steve did it to me. I've been out for meals. He goes, I've collaborated on Instagram. Oh, I'll do it in a minute. Yeah, Fine. yeah. But you didn't so I mean think it, it was like a, instead of me be, just being communicating that actually I would like to take some time to yeah. do that because I want to and yeah. I, I do, just I don't know. You know, like one yeah. of those things where you're moaning you felt about the pressure. it essentially. Yeah. Just moaning instead. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it's so like interesting relationships now, it responses. Is. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't matter. Like, obviously, being a therapist, I don't know. Like, some people might expect that you can just manage things flawlessly. You, you don't. Like, no. you still like in your own dynamics. It's much easier to speak objectively. Yeah, you know, and kind of like see other people's problems with yeah. clarity because they're not your own. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you're feeling a certain way or you've got a particular problem that's really overwhelming you, like I still need somebody else to go to me. Okay. You know, and just give me a bit of objectivity. And this is like what you will. I will do that. And this yeah. is our gen genuine our conversation. So I went um, for a tie last night. Oh, which one? Tie to buy in Newark. Lovely. And um, went with a couple of friends. So Holly, I used to work with it my, in practice before. Mm -hmm. And we've been friends over 10 years. And Amy, I've known her since school. She was in the two years below school years, but she's mm -hmm. actually a year younger than me. But... Um, having a catch up with them, I realised, right, they were telling me stuff and this, that, the other, and they, it was obvious they see, I brought them two together, mm -hmm. so they, Holly was a separate friend to me and Amy was, so yeah. I said, oh, why don't we meet up, I used to do that, bring friendships together. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. and then what's happened is, and not many all like doing this, <laughs> because of this, yeah. they all have their friendship together. Yes, And yeah. do think, so it came very established that they see each other a lot more than I thought. Yeah. And I was like, oh. And I had a moment. Yeah. And the, uh, you know, I don't know if you'll listen to this, but I did have a moment where I like, felt a bit left out. Yeah. But yeah. I've chosen. So before Future Cloud Business, I ran around after every friend. I knew everything about their lives. Yeah. Checked in with them. Made them feel safe, secure, because I wanted to feel like that. Yeah. Are you all right? Are you okay? And, I, and I've 
I can't believe, and Holly used to say this to me, you haven't got the right friends that check in on you yeah. for a change. Yeah. And um, Holly's that sort of friend as well that sometimes you'll message her and she doesn't reply for ages. Yeah. Now, I struggle to get my head around that, and I've said this to her. Yeah. I can't get my head around that. I think if people want to message you, yeah, they will respond quickly she's not bad she doesn't do it all the time and we've laughed about it and know what she's like and she does it to other people yeah some people though and i've learned that need a headspace to reply Mm, to catch up on all their messages yeah i would say i fluctuate between the two sometimes i'll just reply in the moment and sometimes i look at it and i think i'll reply when i've got a minute to that yeah and that's Um, fair enough because i respond so quickly to everybody i used to be like that but i think especially now i've got a small baby yeah I always just, again, I might think, I'll check my phone and see the message and then, I, then I'll look and I'm with Hallie and I think, mm. no. And again, it's me trying to set boundaries of like, yeah. wanting to be a present mum, as I keep saying, is like quite an important value of mine yeah. now. And one that I'm still trying to like navigate. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, live up to in a way and understand like how how I do that without beating yeah. myself up, without setting unre- unrealistic expectations mm. of myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah, I do. And I also thought, I don't want to make time for seeing my friends as often anymore. Yeah. I don't have the capacity. Yeah. I'm allowing myself. And it's interesting because I'll see the odd post on social media and they'll go, family is everything. And I'm like, actually, it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Having your career, doing things for yourself is still everything. And I listened yeah. to a podcast about that. And I thought, I used to think like that. I used to think, why does everyone keep saying, I love my family, but does it mean I need to be in each other's pockets? Well, do you know what? On the like extreme end of this, and yeah. I've had a conversation with one of my clients recently about this, and I do often. On the extreme end, they're, they're very like societal kind of traditional values around family, aren't they? Like, yeah. You should always be there for your family. Like you should always be able to oh rely God, on your family. I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not every family member, but yeah. quite close to my sisters. And yeah, me. which is fair enough. Yeah. And again, it's fine applying these kind of rules to functional relationships, reciprocal relationships, but it doesn't work when you have um, abusive or toxic family members yeah. but there was there's still this sense of obligation and, and part of it is like biological and is grounded in like um, the need for survival from a young age mm. but part of it is this kind of like societal conditioning that well you should look after your family the blood yeah blood runs thicker than water yeah. and you know be the bigger person and yeah. step up and look after them yeah. but it doesn't work for every family and no. it doesn't work for every every like family relationship so Sometimes it's about evaluating your yeah. situation. And again, like yeah. you say, family is everything. That may be true for some people, yeah. and yeah. that's fine. Yeah. If it's not true for you, that's also okay. And that, and for me personally as well, like m- my sisters, we have an understanding. Like I yeah. love catching up with them. They're the closest. Yeah. I'm so lucky. It's not, not everyone has that. No. I'm so lucky. I can tell them anything and everything. We have a right laugh when we meet up and stuff. But I used to see my family, we used to do more things together when I probably wasn't so focused on my own career and building on what I'm doing. But at the same time, they've been supportive of that. Especially my sisters. I I don't see my mum as much, obviously. I don't, Mm -hmm. but, you know, that's normal. But um, we're all busy. But, yeah, I just thought last night, Hang, you know, I do have my deep thoughts. Yeah. That seems like I have to have that because sometimes you see other families doing stuff and you think, oh. And again, this is the problem with social media, <laughs> isn't it? You're yeah. looking in and you might see some with their family. But again, like, do their family li- live near them? Is that their, like, second meet up this year and they've popped a picture on and then you think, oh, that's really nice? You yeah. know, they're doing things all the time. Yeah. Some families will, obviously, but like, is, are you just making assumptions about what you're looking at and I what that means? Exactly. You know, like Christmas, obviously, oh, like, just as a side note, obviously, that's coming up when we're going to speak I love about Christmas, it. though, by I the know. way. Let's not pretend. Yeah, I love Christmas. We love it. We're not no, saying. No, we love yeah. it. Yeah, I love it. It's great. But it's one of those times where it can be difficult to be on social media because there's so much pressure mm-hmm. to make the day, like, perfect and, like, get everyone together and you'll see, like, happy families. Yeah. I'm telling you now, like... With my family, my side of the family, we have a great Christmas. We have so much fun and we'll take pictures and stuff. It's amazing. Alongside that, there will be the biggest rouse and fallouts over games. 
Like, I'm telling you, because it, we're a family that play loads of games at Christmas, yeah. there will be... It's stressful. ...so many for, like... <laughs> it's not, because we just... We laugh about it now, but, like... Yeah. You could look on social media and be like, oh, wow, that's perfect. Yeah. But there was a post in the video where, like, yeah. one person's, like, arguing with the other about the rules of the game. And, I like, because people are quite competitive. Yeah. Like, you're not putting that on. What about when people post on social media stacks of presents that brought the kids and stuff like that? Yeah, that's really <laughs> hard, isn't it? Like, come on. <laughs> and for what? No, I've never done it. I've never even thought to do I it. I know, I know. It's so difficult because I actually still like seeing what other people... Yeah. I still like it. Yeah. But I can see... For somebody that's struggling But then you can't, you can't post content just thinking like that either. You can't, no. So it's interesting social media, and but again, I personally wouldn't. And again, it's I feel like it's our responsibility as individuals to recognise what might be upsetting to us at mm. any like season in our lives. Yeah. And perhaps like mute certain accounts, unfollow yeah. certain yeah. accounts. Um, and one Christmas... What Christmas was it? Actually, there have been a couple of Christmases where... I wasn't really looking forward to it, like relationship breakdowns and like last Christmas obviously had a really difficult one because of my grandma passing away. Mm. So there have been like those Christmases where I've thought to myself, no social media for me yeah. on Christmas day today because it's not oh. going to be of any value to me. Mm. And then there are other years where I'm quite fine. I'll have a little scroll, I'll have a look. But it's just like knowing, knowing what you need yeah. at any one time, depending on what's going on in your life and yeah. trying to... Discipl- discipline yourself yeah. not to just give in and go, oh, I'll look anyway in misery. Yeah, yeah. And it's like looking in Absolutely. misery. Absolutely, yeah. It's interesting because obviously, I just don't know, having, looking at things, I said to my sister this morning actually, so my daughter's going through a bit of a time mm-hmm. and I'm really blunt. Yeah, and we've spoken about We've spoken about this before. <laughs> and my... It's not a problem. I suppose it is. I'm just learning a lot about myself. But yeah. I also, who did I say it to the other week? I might have said it to you, but I'm not a therapist. I'm a solutions gal. Yeah. I like to give ideas and solutions and see the positive side of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I and I need to remind myself not everybody wants that, but I can't just sit and listen to the same stuff. Yeah. And people need to help themselves. Yeah. And, you know, your family members and closest friends, like we said before... Sometimes, you know, you just want somebody to listen, but those people are going to be the ones that are going to make you take a bit of responsibility and accountability. But into a therapist there just to listen? No. And not give solutions? No, no. So I don't know. I'm not that kind of therapist. No, you're not, but the typical ones are. Some some counselling modalities are like listening and there are certain modalities I'm not an expert in all the different counseling modalities but there are some that literally will not give input they will just sit and listen no thank you yeah and I actually had a client recently that came to me and had had a counsellor um trained in that way and she really didn't like it but for some people that's what they need that's what they want but especially like cognitive behavioral therapy um it's a much more like active it, mm. Cognitive behavioural therapy is like um, more of a doing therapy, like interventions to... Giving you homework and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I hear a lot about CBT. Yeah, that's what it is, because it's, it? you know, it's the most um, like evidence-based therapy, which is why the um, NHS use it, because nice guidelines, which NHS base their treatments yeah. on, yeah. recommend that because there's a lot of research for it. So, so no... Like no, I know. for a lot so of what? therapists, it's not. It isn't just to listen. It's about challenge, lightly challenging, um, and your thought processes. Yeah, like you know, if I'm recognizing, like 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 I do with you, like we do with each other, if I'm recognizing mm. actually, your perspective in a situation might not be quite fair. No, because it's you. You people give perspectives from their own experience, experiences, and, yeah. and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And I, I'm when I'm giving advice to anybody, some people know to come to me because they know it's no bullshit and I'm going to exactly. say it how it is. Yeah. But I catch myself trying to be soft and go, oh, yeah, I get it. And I struggle. Yeah. I'm like getting mad with myself because <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. And then I think, I'm shit at this. I can't do that whole, I get it. I do yeah, a bit of it. You don't but... have to be everything for everyone. I this know, is I know. And I feel like I'm letting people down no, when you're I'm not. just being seen the bright side of everything or whatever. No, because I think 
p- people that know you and that come to you to seek advice know what you're about. If they want a certain approach, they're probably not going to come to you for that makes specific me feel thing. rubbish. No, because you can't... Not everyone can come to you for everything. That's no, overwhelming. And then I can start thinking, well, is that because that's why I don't see my friends as much now? No. And start playing on my brain because yeah. I've changed. Yeah, but it's it's not, is it? <laughs> what like. Again, you've got other priorities. Yeah, massive ones. <laughs> and yeah, it's funny you should say that because I was having that thought the other day. Really? Yeah, around like... And again, keep harping on about it, but now I've got a baby as well. I just don't have as much free time as I once had. So I find myself booking things in and then thinking, I don't want to do all of this. Like, it's too much for me. I do that all the time. And even if it's not loads, I just think it's too much for me. It doesn't feel natural for me. Like, maybe I just need to, like, let some things go now. And it's not that I don't care about certain friends, but... The friendships that I'm close that are, that are closest to me, they maintain themselves like regardless of how much I'm seeing people. Yeah. And the wider friends, not that I don't care about people, it's just I don't have capacity mm. for everything. And you know, I'll plan to see people maybe like every couple of months or longer for some people. And but I still find myself thinking, this feels like a bit of a chore. Yeah, like it just feels like. And ob- again, I feel Lovely. obligated. Yeah, but I still, still care for the person and like them. But yeah, I know priorities exactly are elsewhere. So interesting, isn't it? Mm. But going off that, I had a great meeting yesterday. Good. Um, someone that I think's, you know, on the same page as where I'm going with business and all this. Yeah. Stuff. Anyway. So I said, we need to talk about this because I do it, they mm-hmm. do it, you probably do it, and, mm-hmm. you know, employees do it. Yeah. Um, feeling, especially as an own, a business owner as well, feeling not good enough, feeling like you're not doing enough. Yeah. I feel like I'm not ever doing enough, not all the time. When I'm in my strong mindset, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm on it. Ooh. But feeling like nothing is good enough or what, yeah. is, what is this? That is such like a big question. It's a very, everyone's doing it. Everyone feels like that. There are a lot of people that feel like that, I would say. And some of it is grounded in like some of the things we've spoken about before, I think, which is um, our own belief systems and how like developmentally our kind of core beliefs about ourselves, others and the world are fundamentally influenced um i think it's between like pivotal developmental ages are like between two and eight our Mm -hmm. brains are like an absolute sponge we're just on absorb mode yeah and then obviously you know into kind of like adolescent years is a really key point for when we're developing a sense of like ourselves and the world and stuff like that so experiences at those times massively dictate our view of Mm. ourselves others and as i say the world so Certain experiences, like even small things during that time, I think I've given examples of this before, but like for me, I I struggled to concentrate in school Mm. uh, because I wasn't really interested in what we were doing. So then I ended up getting like extra help for like maths and stuff Mm. like that. And again, I just couldn't apply myself to it because I didn't enjoy it. Um, And I remember during GCSE time, it was fine. When I applied myself, I literally crammed for two days and ended up, like, passing. It, it was yeah. fine. Um, but I remember my grandma, like, being really worried. So, like, she got me this extra, like, tuition and whatever. And this um, old maths teacher came in, this guy. And he was like, can you do this? Can you do that? Asking me. And I'm not very good when people ask me things. But if they explain what it is, like... Yeah. Oh, and if you say, like, what's... And if it was, like, oh, it's the one where you've got, like, it's algebra where you've got the bracket and, and whatever, I'd have been, like, oh, yeah, like, I can do a bit of that. But we weren't speaking the same language, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then I remember him vividly saying to my grandma, she's too far behind, like, she's never going to pass. Mm. And, like, that, amongst other little experiences during school, led me to kind of develop this subconscious belief that, like, I'm just thick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm that's... stupid. And that followed me for a long time. So you think if people think they're stupid all the time, because I can, I, there's definitely women, I'll say women, but there's going to be men out there, that feel thick, even mm. when they're not. Yes, 100%. Even when there's lots even of evidence. Even though there's evidence that they're so bright, Yeah. why do they feel thick? Because of 
because the the belief was developed at an age based on information that was kind of biased towards that belief. So it's that classic, isn't it? Like when we're criticised, mm. we really like hone in on that and we listen to it. When you get praise, you're like, oh, thank you. But if it doesn't align with those core beliefs that were de- developed early on, then we'll question it. And we can kind of like squash a compliment to fit what we might already believe deep mm. down, even though our rational brain knows that's not necessarily true it can take a lot of work though to identify that negative belief and you know understand what experiences might have fueled that and then to be like okay it needs updating it's out of date it's not serving as well like let's go back and sometimes do a historical test in cbt when we're working out um when we're trying to like um reframe these beliefs yeah. it take a while but it's you know very possible and effective and we'll go back through history okay at that time when you were a child what were the things going on that kind of disprove that you think you're stupid yeah and we'll do like a timeline of all the things up until present day mm. that actually disprove that mm. um and so it's about how you behave in certain situations sometimes our beliefs might so my belief that i was sick or stupid would kind of become mildly activated when I was sat in um, a meeting at my old job and I was asked my opinion on things. Your heart would be going crazy. And and there it would be then at the forefront, this is it. Everyone's going to realise you that you are <laughs> stupid. Do you know what I mean? But this what that be... meant was yeah. it would... Um, it would mean that I would rather sort of sit quietly <laughs> yeah, in so meetings. Yeah, sit quiet in meetings. Until oh. I was addressed, rather than like offering up my opinions and yeah. asking like questions and stuff like that. Because yeah, I'd be, be like... be curious is what they say. Yeah, whereas now, I'll do it anyway. Because I think, like I know, most of me knows I'm actually not stupid. You just need to put yourself forward, where, even if you feel stupid. And again, and it goes sounds... back to that anxiety, doesn't it? Like leaning into it and challenging it. Yeah. And trying to get objectivity where it's hard like okay if somebody else had done what I'd done in life in their career academically or just like you know vocationally Mm. would I think they were stupid Mm. no okay so is it fair for me to stick that label on myself no it's not like just like coaching yourself through it say that talk to yourself a lot yeah so they're not feeling not good enough is similar but the not good enough belief is extremely common because it's so broad what about not doing enough that's how i feel they're not doing enough they're They're not doing enough i think is massively driven now by and again i don't want to like launch into too much of it but i think it's massively driven by like um the society that we live in because we was talking about getting a million turnover yeah and by like capitalism toxic productivity you know the kind of like model that we live in in our society is one of like in order to feel worthy in order to achieve and be successful we must do and we must meet goals achieve in like a very traditional sense but it can look so different and it's that classic like toxic productivity Mm that and like hustle culture yeah those kind of narratives i think massively play into that when yeah. we've got time and space or we're sitting down or we've not done much with a day perhaps yeah. even if you might be poorly and you go i'm so lazy it's like no you're not oh my god i do that all the time what, because I, you've sat I'm... down for one day of the week, or because you've sort of like i want to be productive every day because i get off on it i feel like yes i've done something even if it's at home tidying yeah. the wardrobe out yeah and again, and it's a it's a balance, isn't it? Because I that's what I'm like inherently. But it makes you it can make you miserable. It can make you very miserable because you're just you're so focused on the next task, the next goal. You you struggle to like bask in the last achievement or be like oh, that's what's really next, good. what's next? Yeah, right, what now? <laughs> and I say this so openly. I say this to even my employees, I talk about it. And it's, that's why I'm doing the gratitude, be grateful, because I, yeah. did, I did a story, right? And I'm going to show off a little bit here, and I don't know if this is too open. But even though I pay corporation tax, and even limited companies have to pay that. Yeah. But that tax bill was more than a salary I was on before. Yeah, yeah. And I should be like, I know it's a, a bill, mm. but the, the fact that I'm doing that, I still, I need to think and go, wow. But I yeah. don't, I go, oh, what next and I need to do this now because actually yeah. I want this next goal and it's still not good enough. Yeah. What can I be doing? What can I be doing? Yeah. And then I'll panic about the team and I'll panic about... Yeah. 
Is yeah. that, I have to be there for, oh, I've messaged them for a while. Yeah. I need yeah. to message them because they're going to think, I don't give, you know, damn about them. And that's not true. I think about everybody so much. Yeah. That I need to put my own boundaries in. A hundred percent, yeah. And yeah. Everyone, anyone can relate to this. And also, I think as well, like part of um, having a more regulated nervous system and not being as anxious, like in these situations in business or, you know, constantly on that. Yeah, trying to move, that give you that nervous yeah. energy. It's about, like, trying to be confident in yourself and your values. Yeah. So what you said then, being able to say, I do care about my team and I do care about other people and I do things regularly to demonstrate that. Yeah. So I don't have to do everything just in case and worry and panic about oh, no. it. So I'm not going to do that thing. And if... I'm up against a situation where somebody says that like, I don't feel like it's different. you're, then you can say, I'm I'm really sorry about that. I, I actually do. I really value you. Yeah. What what do you need to yeah. see? What would help in like you feeling valued? You can address that. I doubt you're gonna be in that situation because like you say, you are a thoughtful person anyway. Yeah. But it's that line of like that doesn't mean that you need to be doing all of the time. Again, you can like rein it in 20 or 30% and still get the same result. It's so true. A lot. So going back to like fitness as well, obviously you know how obsessed I get. I get really obsessed. If I say I'm gonna do something, I get obsessed. It's not It's not always healthy. I know, and I don't know why I'm like this, but in a good way as well, because you, you do you get and better. And that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes it's good and sometimes, sometimes it's unhealthy. Yeah. yeah, so I overtrained for so long, for about a year, yeah. if I'm really honest, and I knew what we were. We've scaled it back, mm. and I feel so much better. And I also yeah. think in time now, we are going to get even better just exactly. from reining it back. Yeah. So any advice to people that are starting the business five years in like me mm. and are taking it to the next level, you've just got to keep reassuring yourself. You've got to trust the process. You have. And I think sometimes, or you can get quick wins and that's really validating. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, like you're the same, I think, and I was before I'd be like, I'd make my mind up that I wanted something, then I want it now. Yeah. As soon no as possible, patience. I want it now. Whereas now I'm kind of trying to sit into it and think, this is my goal for my business. Yeah. But let's accept that I've got a young baby, George is trying to launch his business. So I'll set those goals and I'll try and make some level of commitment each week to work towards mm. it. But actually it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen in the next couple of months or even in the next year for some of the mm. things I want to achieve. Just be consistent and trust that it will come. And yeah. like try and appreciate, again, like the gratitude, try and appreciate where you are now yeah. in your business. And sometimes it helps to look back, doesn't it? Like you said about, you know, earning, like having to pay a tax bill that was more than the sal it salary you used to have. Sick. <laughs> but sometimes you need to look back to appreciate, don't you? And I was thinking about this the other day, like when I trained to be a nurse and, um, you know, I used to look at people that could work from home, like before COVID, and I used to think, that's so cool. I'll never be a person like that. Like I'm, I've not chosen a profession where that would be possible. And then I sat the other day and I thought, I'm doing exactly what I thought would be amazing. Like seven or eight years ago now. And now I can't fully appreciate it because I want mm. something else now. I've done that. That's nice. <laughs> That's boring now. Oh yeah, not well, it wasn't as good as you thought either. Most yeah, of the time so I not. just like was sitting and walking and I thought to myself, that's actually so amazing. Like, mm. it's so cool. And then, obviously, I voice noted you yesterday about that thing I realised. Like, the thing we'd spoken about of wanting to work with certain types of people yeah. had happened. Like, only in one sense. Oh, I know. Sense. Well, I... We won't say too much. Well, you can talk about... Well, we can about, talk about... Yeah. The, right, so... You... We had a conversation a few years ago, and you want to work... Can we say it? Yeah, I wanted to work with, like, celebrities, yeah. didn't I? Oh, yeah. I want to be and a celebrity the one, therapist. Yes, yeah. and I said, say it, say that you want that. Mm. Why can't you just be honest about that or influence the bloody whatever? Mm. I do believe in the power of saying stuff out loud. Yeah, for and sure. And writing it down or whatever. Yeah. Obviously, pen to paper, people say that's really good. And look what's happening. I know. And honestly, I'm buzzing. And it's funny though, because I've got this one this one client that then I messaged you in, I was like, yeah, buzzing. I'm, I've done it. Like, but then my brain was like, well, no, you haven't, because it's only one person, and yeah. they came through this route, and this and that, but I was like, no, you've done it, and like, yeah, Yeah, I do so that. cool. I have a visionary of like, what type of businesses I want, and when mm. something does happen, yeah, yeah, boy, it only came through because of, 
well, yeah. me. Like, it doesn't fit perfectly what I envisage, but <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're not just going to drop you straight. I know. But that person will refer to another celebrity. Exactly. And also, I think what, right, so I, we said out loud, we're sharing about George and his business. Yeah. Potentially, we need to share that you're going to do content mm-hmm. around the type of client you want and say it out loud who you work with, the type of clients. Yeah. Because I've done that. And like... So you work, I work with celebrity, if you're this, if you're mm-hmm. this, and you feel like this, get in touch sort of thing. Yeah. Why don't you do a bit of content around that and, and then let us know? Yeah, absolutely. You've done it. This I is will. your accountability. But George is doing the garage today, so I haven't got time. Oh, oh don't, don't you dare. <laughs> There's George. Does George listen to these, by the way? Yeah. Right, okay. So we need a bit of an update. So my, I had a chat with my sister, who her, her partner used to do what George is doing. Oh, Yeah. Years ago, so before yeah. the social media scenes, so yeah. you can imagine how long ago it yeah. was. It is tough, and yeah. he had a setup on the industrial estate. Ah, right. So it was a different. He did do weddings. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a different type of thing. Yeah. And this was before think things cost more and you yeah, know food. Yeah, absolutely. So, and uh, but he loved doing it. Yeah. So yeah. I think with social media, the potential is really he's good. had like a flurry of bookings again this week this is so good his diary's really filling up so um, what's it what di- does he have like a oh, this is me you're gonna say he's got a paper diary or something he wants a paper diary no <laughs> <laughs> but i use our calendar shared yeah, calendar. Shared calendar. yeah that's hilarious <laughs> but that doesn't work well with his brain so i'm uh, like yeah a booking system it or... sounds like i'm i'm good at that at systems and admin and stuff yeah George can't stand it and he hates it. Yeah. That's why, like, that's the bit that, like, I'm helping more with. Yeah. Um, Which is great. It Obviously, is. Obviously, pen to paper's fine, but you need somewhere where you both yeah. can access it. It's a learning curve, though, because his business is actually more complex to run than mine. You know, because there's, like, um, I don't even know what the word is. It's oh, not like a service. It's service, and it's, like, details, and you need to get the client's details yeah, and, and where they're um, going. and stock. Like, stock how much does he buy he's going to get that wrong overbuy underbuy 100 percent. yeah that's yeah. a worry and he'll yeah. learn quickly on yeah that. yeah um how does he quote then does he use a does he use zero for quoting no what's he use for quoting then nothing george well how's he quote what do you mean so when someone goes oh i want this it's i don't know 15 pound ahead or whatever yeah he just decides and then just what well, messages them. yeah oh you could send a Proper quote out. They accept it. <laughs> Turn it into an invoice. So we, we can invo- He's invoicing through Who's sum it? up. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> 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 this is an accountant's nightmare. No, sum up's actually sum up is good, it but is not not good. not to the accounting end of it. I know. It's like here you go. Here's a bit of the sum up stuff, and then you're looking for all the scrambling for the receipts. Well, I'm scanning all the receipts oh. into a shared folder that we've got. But then that'll be all right to upload into Dex at some point then. We'll yeah. just do that. Anyway, we'll discuss that. We this need to it. talk about that. This is it. I need this to get what, ahead of it. Yeah. You need to get ahead of it. This is for any new business. I know too many in hospitality. It's the worst for it. It is because there's so many bits. So many bits. Setting yeah. up and think I can't pay for that. I'm already stressed because I'm saying to George, like, we need to get on top of it. And actually, I don't even do my own accounts. And I said, and yours are more complicated than mine. <laughs> Yeah, we'll discuss that. We'll have a chat. Because offline. think, yeah, offline we'll do that. But yeah. think about, and I know why you've not talked to me about it yet. I get it mm. because um, it's a still, he's still employed. He's still yeah. testing things out. Yeah, yeah. But quickly, he'll oh. have a mountain of receipts and he won't be claiming as much as he could because things get lost. Yeah, yeah. He could have an app on his phone straight away. Yeah. So, so he could t- and think about your best time and his best time. And that's what mm-hmm. I'm going to say. People... Uh, with systems and automations there's so much technology out there so ai there is ai is amazing so i'm looking into ai that can record your calls transcribe it so if i have a client call yeah i did a coaching session the other day with with a coach that i spoke about oh yeah that looks after you yeah yeah yeah. and um we were on zoom and she had had, someone in there with her yeah she had the 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 ai in there is it otter i don't know it was like through zoom yeah, it's yeah. like one of the apps that like Zoom offers. So then there. it will transcribe it for us. Yeah. And then download it. You can do a free version. There's a paid version. Yeah. We, I've done it for my meetings before, but the one yeah. I've used wasn't great. I'm now yeah, it's trial and error, isn't trial it? Trial and error. Yeah. Um, I'm, I force myself, and I can understand where George is coming from, to make notes of everything. Mm-hmm. I hate 
taking notes and writing yeah, notes. I'm not yeah. very good at that. I just want to go on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Mm. So if I can do something that can help me, yeah. so I don't have to write notes, all the better. Mm. So I am trying to think future thinking all the time. That's what I do with yeah. the business, to try and make it automated. Yeah. And this is what people do wrong. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. When really... Oh, I can't afford to do that. Well, hang on a minute. Can you afford not to do that? Yeah, and obviously I didn't have that attitude with my business. You didn't straight away. I, you had no. You didn't have any income. I had to nothing, me and I couldn't afford it. Yeah, really. Like obviously, yeah. in terms of sale, at first I was earning five hundred pounds a month, yeah. and it had cost me, you know, a yeah. big chunk of that yeah. to have bookkeeping and accounts yeah. done. But I recognised that I needed that. It's a load off. It's that reassurance. Yeah, and again, it's a long game, isn't it? It's a it long game. It will pay you back in dividends. And it did. At 100%. Because you was on, we, you know, the limited company route, we discussed that, although tax-wise, it's not great yeah. for sole traders anyway, yeah. so it's fine. Yeah. But it's just having, be able to reach out to somebody and go, oh, actually, mm-hmm. because you're paying a monthly fee, yeah. you'll feel you can. Yeah. If you wait until the year end... Yeah, I think exactly. well, I best not because they're going to bill me for this. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting out mm. there, and I also think, and this is for other businesses that've been going five years, it never ends with tech. You've got to keep up to date with it because what software we use in the beginning, we are changing now. Yeah, and it's scary, and it's me. frustrating, isn't it? Like I changed systems when I came back to work after mat leave. And it's so easy not to do it because you're familiar with the old one, you know how to work it, so it feels quicker. Yeah. But, and then it took me a lot of time investment to learn how to work through this system, and I still am learning. I'm getting annoyed. Mm. Again, I'm trying to do the zero export and stuff like that, which is really irritating me. Yeah, yeah. So it's so easy not to do it. But once you've learned how to use the new things, that's when you can really, like, save time, energy, money. Yeah, like. Yeah. It does, honestly. But I'm... you've got to put that initial investment in, like, either financially, time-wise, or yeah. both. So Yeah, and I, and also, I'm paying for software for a workflow for our team. Mm. It is cost going to cost me thousands more than the initial. Yeah. And let me tell you now, it's no good me saying to others, you need to invest, you need to invest. I need to do it myself. 100%. And it scares me so much, but I have to think long-term pay, like mm. short-term pain for long-term gain. Mm-hmm. And that is by having a better workflow. If I want to increase the team members, because we've got a new a new lady, Hannah, yeah. started on Monday. Yeah. And um, we're interviewing for another accountant to join us. If yeah. I want to keep growing that team, we need a workflow because I've learned that I don't know where everyone's at. Yeah. And I can't by just going into each individual person going, where are you at? Yeah. That's going to take my time. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> yeah. You need to be able to have a glance. Yes. And so, an aerial view at everything. Yeah, it's really interesting at the minute. But asking about George, is he coming on to Thurmwood? Because they do do yeah. pizza weeks or whatever they do. On the 22nd of November. What, just as a one-off? Yeah, it's a pop-up. Mm-hmm. For now, and then he's where is he going to be? So is he just going to pull up outside? He's at the community centre. Oh, you have to go in there. No, the trailer is going to be there. Brilliant. Yeah, and it's just free. So it's free for all. Yeah, anyone can come. All oh, right, okay. and turn up and pay for food. And he's going to take it home, sort of thing. Yeah, it's or not... sit in and eat oh, it. Because right, okay. I don't know exactly how firm would work, but the Collingham oh, on the holiday. Just thought. Well, the Collingham pop ups on the eighth of November. Eighth. Yes, yeah, so I can do that one. Um, and that's going to be set up, so the um, the hall is going to be open with music on. It's kind of like bring your own beer for anyone that wants to. Um, and then George will be cooking the food and people can go in and sit and eat with friends. I need tea at the moment, I'm weak. Oh. I might be back. Like? There's a back. few other events, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we'll share so yeah. and comment and get yeah. pictures of the food. Yeah, but he's going to he's gonna do... Um, we, we, again, it's another thing we need to work out how best to offer it, but a pre-order system as well, because yeah, he's already had messages system. about pre-ordering. Yeah, and brilliant. again, just to make things a bit easier and for him to gauge like how much stock you might need. Exactly that. An additional exactly stock. That. So, yeah. Um, what else have we got coming up? So let's talk about, so you're going to tell us more about the George side of things and what else, and you're going to do <clears throat> some content that we can share yeah. around the type of client you want deserve <laughs> um and then what i need to talk about so i go on my honeymoon in so uh, those are new to listen don't know anything about me whatsoever i'm just going to tell you i got married june the 8th wow that's flown and yeah honeymoon is i'm looking at my app because the lovely gina barton who's a travel counselor yeah helped me with the booking you know gina i know of her no other. yeah from the gym 
I never thought I'd book a travel council. No, I can do it better myself. Yeah. I, I can do I can do travel my own. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm that, that person that it needs it to be like, I need to look at that and then I'll look yeah, at all yeah. the views and go back and forth and take days and weeks and yeah. get upset about <laughs> which one's the best one. Yeah. So I put my trust in Gina and she was fab. 53 days to go to <gasps> Thailand. To do. So I'm not trying to lose weight as such, but tidy up my diet. Yeah. So I've been doing it since mid-August, mm-hmm. so it's a month and a bit, about four or five weeks, I feel so much better. Yeah. So I allow myself one day of naughtiness. Yeah. And then last night I went for a tie, so I'm not stopping myself. No, no. I'm not eating chocolate every day like I was. Yeah, just reining it in a bit. Reining it in. Yeah, that's and where me and Georgia, every day we say, right, Monday <laughs> stuff. <laughs> not even Monday, it's like... The, the pr- the issue with George, oh. he's got he's good cook and he's got all that friggin' food, hasn't he? I know. I know. How are you gonna do that then? Well, you tell me. That's so. Why are you saying to each other? Do you need to? What do you mean? Lose weight. Well, does anyone does anyone need, need to? to? No, it's a feeling. Do you know what it? I mean? It's just about wanting to feel better in yourself, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I think for us as well as new parents, it's more about us like feeling energized, like. Just feeling optimised health-wise, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm definitely aware of that. Up until now, I've not felt like I've had the capacity for it, not even time-wise, but just mentally. Yeah. Trying to learn how to be a parent. Yeah. Learning of getting in a flow with a yeah. baby, coming back to work. Could I have made time? I'm sure I could have done. It's, it's easy to grab not food. been a priority for me. No. And it still isn't. I'm not quite there yet. Yeah. But I'm well, on my way. There's no pressure. The thing is, it's... I've always been into this. I say to yeah, you yeah, yeah. loads of times, yeah. and I'm allowing myself to be like this and not think, oh, what are they going to think? Because I'm no. on another diet. No. And I don't no. call it diets anymore. No. Just no. trimming it up a bit, shall I say. Yeah. And that's because I'm coming to 40 and I want to be in my best shape. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and others will always say to me, you look good already. Yeah. But do I feel it? <laughs> will I ever yeah. feel it? I am feeling good. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm not, what I always said to myself, I'm never going to diet for a holiday. I want yeah. to be in good shape all year round. Yeah, just like lifestyle. But tweaks, because yeah. you, get, you do get a bit more tight your trousers now and again, then I yeah. strain it back. Yeah. I'm in this best place that I've ever been yeah. with food, like, yeah. ever. And yeah. I had to train for performance, which is like loads of calories, which is really yeah. great. Yeah. But it left me feeling a bit like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. And I think no matter how thin or slim, or however you want to say it, you are, yeah. we all still have yeah. hang-ups. Absolutely. And again, you know... It's not always about aesthetics. A lot of the time it can be, but it, you know, for me in particular now, I'm at a stage where like, when I start training again and eating a bit better, it's because I want to feel good. I want it's to manage feeling. stress. And I recognize when I'm not, you know, moving my body as much and eating well, my anxiety oh, God, w- will creep right up on me. Like. So sometimes when I'm feeling overwhelmed or, yeah. you know, I'm having a lot of negative thoughts or I'm worrying a lot, catastrophizing, yeah. I'm like, you need to start moving more yeah. and training. Because I remember when I had, like, the busiest calendar ever work-wise, now I'd feel like I was having an absolute meltdown. But then I was training, like, yeah. a few times a week, going to boot camps and stuff, eating well. Um Obviously, I lived on my own as well. And I was, like, so very much, much in control of my environment and yeah. what I was doing and stuff, which is another thing. Um, but yeah, like I, I could manage that no problem. Like it didn't feel too much. It didn't feel anxiety provoking. When I trained, I'd go into the day and think like, I can do this. Yeah. Like I'm confident. Yeah. So it's about like your attitude it's as well. It's such an attitude thing. It it's is, more the feeling than it the... It is, yeah. 100%. And yeah. I think if you can go in with that mindset, then you know, the physical side of things does actually just come with it. Yeah, it does. But if you're only going in, I'm not saying it's wrong, like, have goals, you know, about your appearance and stuff if you want, but if that's your primary driver and it's more about beating yourself up about how you look and, mm. you know, again, not being good enough and stuff, it's much harder yeah. to maintain, Yeah. you know, because it feels like a chore, a punishment, and it oh, shouldn't. Oh, it does, and I've punished my body for years. I've yeah. been eating disorder, and that's yeah. something we can talk about another day. And no one will understand how that is until you've been in it. And that's why you shouldn't judge yeah. like the way I want to live. This is me really healthy and I exactly. like to look and feel good. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. But 
We'll wrap it up. We yeah. have had another question, but I want to discuss it. We'll discuss it next week. But we yeah. are going to talk about sales and marketing a bit more. Yeah. Because that's how I built Future Cloud. Yeah. Um, so that'll be an interesting subject. And then we'll catch up on the things we've discussed yeah. today, which is dead exciting. Definitely. Um, and yeah, I can't believe we'll be in October. It feels like yeah. it outside. Yeah, I know, I know. I love it. I do like yeah. October, though, the month of October. Yeah, I love it. and I think we need to talk about the changing seasons and how that can impact your mood as well. Yeah, because someone um, said to me... I felt that, that this last week. Like, yeah. yesterday when I noticed it was kind of, like, dark at So seven. that's that sad. It can be. Seasonal... Affective disorder, disorder yeah. yeah. Or it can... Or it's... Yeah, or it, not necessarily that intense, but, like, just feeling more sluggish yeah we'll talk about that that's yeah. interesting because yeah. i definitely felt yeah. that so yeah yeah and thanks as always for listening and we will see you for our coffee next week yeah thanks bye bye